Hello, this is Klaus Jensen presenting yet another Bent Larsen game from the year 1967. This was the year that earned uh, Larsen the, the annual Chesser Oscar Award as the best player in that particular, particular year. The award was based on votes from uh, chess journalists from all over the world, and Larsen was the first winner. From 1968 and uh, forth, the annual Chess Oscar Award was a list of 10 players receiving the most votes from the journalists. But in this first year uh, of the Chess Oscar, only one player was named, and that was Bent Larsen. I have done videos from uh, his tournament wins in Havana and uh, Winnipeg, and now I'm going to show you a game from the Interzonal in Sousse, Tunisia. It's by no means a spectacular game. It brings no brilliant combinations. This is solid chess play uh, based on uh, sound positional uh, principles and a very good example of uh, Larsen's attitude to the game towards the game. And I will talk more about that later in the video. The game is from uh, round 16 of the Interzonal. At this point, Fischer has left the tournament, and Larsen is now having his eye on another, uh, on another tournament win. His opponent is uh, Vlastimil Hort, the Czech Grandmaster who belonged to the world elite in the late 60s and the 70s. And in the 80s uh, Hort moved to uh, Germany and I believe he became a German citizen, citizen and uh, did represent uh, the unified Germany later on. In this tournament Hort finished uh, tight 6th uh, and, and qualified qualified for the Candidates tournament after a player for, uh, with the Ryshevsky and the Stein. In this game, uh, Hort is white and Larsen is black. And uh, as I said, it's uh, round 16 of the Interzonal in Sousse, 1967. And uh, I'll just play through, through the opening moves. We are having a, a closed Sicilian. Um, both sides uh, fear and kissing the kingside uh, bishops, and uh, it's a somewhat uh, peaceful uh, opening play here. And um, and Larsen has come out of the the first opening phase without any problems. And uh, now uh, Hort plays a uh, knight d5, and in in this tight position, uh, which is uh, rather closed, Larsen decides that uh, the knight might be. Uh, at least as uh, useful as a bishop, so he takes on d5 uh, immediately with the with the bishop. An alternative could be to uh, to play knight d4 instead, and then uh, white could exchange uh, knights on uh, e7, and this would lead lead to a, a position where, where where both sides have uh, have the pair of bishops, and this would uh, of course also be be very playable for for black. But um, but Larsen decides to take on a d5 with the bishop, and then he plays a knight d4, and uh, and then he swaps the uh, knights on the e2, and uh, and here Larsen uh, plays b5, expanding on the queen side, and uh, there's no doubt that uh, that here we can see that uh, that Larsen has uh, equalized from the opening. White is having the the pair of bishops, but. Uh, this has no significance as long as uh, the center is closed. Um, Hort plays uh, c3 and uh, Larsen continues expa uh, expanding on the queen side with the a5. And uh, and here Hort uh, counters on the, the queen side playing a4 and b4 is played. Hort takes on b4 and uh, it's very important for for black here to, to take with the a pawn because this is keeping uh, the, the dynamism in the, in the position on the queen side if, in if instead uh, black takes with the, the c pawn then we can see that uh, the queen side is becoming much more static uh, we have two uh, pawns against two pawns um, and they can go nowhere and uh, the c file is now open and uh, this can be uh, controlled uh, by white just as well as black so so this would give uh, black no uh, no possibilities here on the queen side 
So it's very impo important to take with the, the A-pawn, and that is of course what Larsen does. Also, uh, also is, uh, it's important, uh, even though that uh, that White gets this uh, protected uh, this uh, protected pass pawn, uh, and still the the right thing is to to take with the A pawn. B three and uh, as I said, uh, now White has the the prote protected uh, pass pawn. Larsen plays Knight F five. And I think he does so for for several reasons. It it could be heading for 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 d4, and it could be uh, simply planning to to swap off the uh, e3 three uh, bishop because a plan for white could be to play queen d2 and then bishop h6 uh, and swap off uh, the g7 bishop. But this is not possible uh, when uh, when Larsen plays knight f5 because now he covers the h6 uh, square. And uh, as uh, I said before, he can he can swap out the the bishop on e3. Hort plays a uh, rook a e1, h5 follows. And then Hort plays a uh, bishop a3. And I think this is a reasonable move because uh, there's no doubt that uh, this bishop is a is a weak bishop uh, because uh, of uh, the d5 pawn here, which is uh, is blocked effectively. Um, this bishop has uh, no scope uh, on uh, g2, and even on uh, f1, it is blocked by by the d3 pawn here. So the only square that is uh, is good for this bishop is uh, is h3, where it has uh, this diagonal to to work on. And uh, at the same time, it uh, almost forces Larsen to to swap on e3, and that is what he does. And then we reach uh, this position. And I think this position is uh, very interesting, and this is uh, actually the position that uh, that made me uh, choose uh, to make a video on this game. Because um, first, chess-wise, let's look at the the position. It's a it's an equal position with the opposite colored bishops, which are both uh, quite weak, as I spoke of uh, just before here. Uh, this g7 bishop is blocked by the e5 pawn. And uh, and this bishop is only uh, having a potential here on h3 because normally when you have a, a weak bishop you have to put it uh, in front of the pawn chain but this is not very easily done for for either of those bishops. The imbalances uh, in the position lies uh, lie on the on the queen side where we have a dynamic imbalance. Uh, White is having the protected p uh, pass pawn on a4, and uh, black is having some possibilities uh, with the c and the b pawns, which could which could uh, create a pass pawn at some point uh, if uh, black is uh, able to make uh, a c4 push. So chess-wise, um, this is a, a an equal position, uh, but of course still with uh, some possibilities um, and I think if you think of the situation that the, that Larsen was in at the at this point he had uh, he had played loads of tournament games all year and uh, he was having uh, the black pieces in this game against an opponent who is uh, in the upper half of the tournament table so I think that the uh, I believe that many players would be satisfied with the draw here. Um, but Larsen was not like uh, other players. He uh, he had an uh, immaculate uh, fighting spirit and a strong desire to to win any position. And as a chess player, I think this was both his uh, strength and uh, his weakness. Um, his weakness because in uh, in his desire to win any position. He sometimes overestimated his uh, his positions, and that that uh, surely uh, led to uh, to to defeats where he he might have uh, been able to get a draw. But in uh, many other cases, it uh, it also led to uh, to a win instead of a draw. And um, in this position, <coughs> it's clear that uh, Larsen, who has an eye on the, the tournament win, he wants to win this game. 
and uh, if you want to win this game there's only one move that's that really gives you any chance of uh, of uh, of getting this win and that is uh, you have to prevent prevent uh, white from playing e4 because then that the sensor would be closed permanently so you have to play e4 here this is sacking a pawn but uh, it's it's so it's so typical Larsen the this move here first of all uh, it's positional sound as I have the marked with the arrow here just look at the g7 bishop just a few seconds ago I, uh, I was t telling you that this uh, bishop was a uh, weak but now it's uh, it's uh, after the e4 uh, push then the it has opened up the g7 uh, bishop completely and make making it very strong and um, at the same time the e4 push is uh, removing the the d3 uh, pawn which make the makes the c4 push um, more possible uh, when when the time comes so positionally uh, this is a very uh, sound uh, move but I think psychologically uh, it's also a very important move, move because uh, it's telling your opponent that uh, you're playing to win it says uh, don't expect an easy walk in the park and I think um, this single move illustrates uh, very well uh, which kind of chess player uh, Bent Larsen was he was the fighter who wants to win and, and uh, who has a deep positional understanding of the game. And this uh, Larsen attitude towards the game of chess has uh, brought him a lot of wins and of course a lot of losses, um, as I said before. And uh, to um, to see if uh, I was uh, right, I did a little uh, search on uh, chessgames.com and uh, in all Larsen's games there, I think it was uh, about two and a half thousand games. He drew only uh, thirty-one percent of his games. And uh, for comparison, uh, I did a search in uh, some of his uh, grandmaster colleagues of that time to see uh, how they managed, uh, how how their drawing percentages was, and uh, were. And uh, Grigorich drew fifty percent of his games. Spassky drew 56% of his games, Smithstuff 52%, even Tal, uh, who played a very tactical game, drew 47% of his games, and Karis uh, drew 39% of his games. The only player I found uh, had a lower drawing percentage than uh, Larsen was actually Fischer, uh, who drew only 26% of his games. So there's no doubt that uh, that Larsen uh, was a player who uh, who played ultimately for the win and uh, thereby getting a, a lot more wins than his colleagues, but also a lot more losses. But uh, back to the game uh, after e4, uh, Hort is of course uh, forced to accept the pawn sack, and then. Um, after queen e7, queen c4, then Larsen plays h4, and now he's creating uh, yet another weakness uh, in the white camp. This time on the the king side, so we now can uh, see that uh, soon white will have a weak weak g3 pawn. He has a weak uh, e3 pawn, and actually also a weak e4 pawn, and he has a weak b3 pawn. So this is the the positional um, idea behind uh, h4. Hort plays a uh, rook f3, and white takes on a g3 as planned, and then he plays a uh, bishop e5, and this bishop is now uh, a, a monster. Uh, after the e4 push, uh, the e5 square is uh, available for for the bishop, and the nice thing uh, about this bishop is that uh, it cannot be attacked. There's no piece uh, that can attack it, and uh, there's no pawns uh, to attack this bishop. And the bishop is uh, able to operate on both sides of the board. Um, 
it can uh, protect a, a possible pass pawn on the queen side, and uh, it can attack the the weak pawn uh, on g3. So this uh, bishop is a uh, is a monster right now. Rook e f1 followed, and uh, I think uh, Hort does the the right thing here. He uh, tries to create some counterplay in the f file, which was uh, given to him after Larsen's uh, e4. Um, queen g5, king g2, uh, queen king g7, queen b5. Uh, Hort is trying to to activate his queen, uh, possibly go to uh, d7. Uh, and put even more pressure on uh, f7. So Larsen feels he has to uh, retreat his queen to e7, and uh, furthermore, this uh, can support uh, the rook a7 move, which um, is coming soon to protect the, the f7 pawn and block the seventh rank for for the white queen. After rook f2, then rook a7, as I said. And now, if you try to uh, put you, uh, yourself in the uh, in seat of a uh, white, you can say that um, he might think that uh, he, he has the upper hand now, because uh, he has nice pressure in the f file, and his uh, otherwise bad light, uh, light squared bishop is uh, is nicely placed on the a3. He's a pawn up, and he has a protected pass pawn on the on the on a4, and he has a, a relatively active queen on the, on the queen side. So Hort maybe um, may have been uh, thinking that uh, that he can play for a win now, and what he does is uh, is actually a, a mistake. Um, because he plays a5 now, which is a bit too optimistic, because this a pawn is not uh, supported well enough to to be able to to advance it uh, for conversion, and and so the a5 pawn is a, is not a threat for black. It's uh, rather creating a a weakness for for white himself. So now he not uh, he doesn't know have only. He doesn't only have weakens on g3 and uh, e3 and the e4 and and b3. Now this pawn is actually also a, a weakness. Larsen uh, plays uh, queen b7 because uh, he knows that the the end game after after queen takes, rook takes, rook a2, uh, c4 is very promising for for black. You see that both rooks can. Uh, can uh, support uh, a pass pawn on the queen side, and this bishop is, uh, is a good support as well. So this end game is looking very promising for for black. And of course, Hort knew knew that as well. So he played uh, queen c6 instead. And um, what he was hoping for here was that uh, Larsen would take on c6, because then d takes c4, then uh, then white is having a Clearly having some uh, counterplay because now his uh, h3 bishop can go to d7 and support the, the c6 pawn, and uh, and this will give uh, White some uh, some some counterplay. So Larsen wasn't interested in uh, in taking on c6. Instead, he played uh, queen a6. Uh, he would like to exchange the queens, but uh, but not of the co on the cost of uh, giving a White a pass pawn in the c file. And um, if uh, Hort had taken on a6, then again we have the same uh, story as before. A uh, very promising uh, endgame for for Black, who is able to uh, to take on a5, and possibly also play uh, rook a3 and uh, attack the, the the weakness on b3, and can push the c4 pawn. So very good prospects for for Black again. So uh, instead of attacking on a6. Hort tries a, a little tactical shot here. He plays a bishop e6 because um, the idea here is, of course, uh, that um, he wants to put even more pressure on f7. And uh, of course, black cannot take here because then uh, the rook on f8 is hanging. Um, 
So uh, so Larsen simply takes on a5. This pawn that uh, was pushed just a few moves ago has now uh, been lost for for white. Um, Hort now plays uh, king h3, which is uh, is not the best move, but uh, he's already in a big trouble here in uh, in this position. Larsen should uh, simply have played the rook a h check here, and uh, then he can pick up the the bishop on uh, e6 because now the rook on f8 is no no longer pinned; it has been removed from the pin. But uh, Larsen didn't play that; he played uh, rook c7 instead, threatening the queen, and. Um, if uh, Hort had played a uh, queen a4 here, then simply take on a4, and uh, the connected pass pawns will uh, decide the game for for Black. So instead, Hort played uh, rook a2. But again, uh, this is uh, taking away the pressure in the f file, and now uh, after rook takes c6 and uh, White taking the queen on a5, rook uh, c7. White has to uh, remove his uh, bishop on e6, which is now uh, threatened uh, because there's no longer a pin in the f file. So he plays bishop g4, and now uh, Larsen can play what he has been uh, working for all game. He can play his uh, c4 push, and it uh, it turns out that uh, the pass pawn that uh, Larsen gets in the b file is. Uh, is uh, the key for Larsen to take advantage of all the other weaknesses he has uh, created in the white camp earlier on, um, and we shall see how that uh, that materializes. Uh, B takes rook B8 to support the B pawn, rook F1, B3, bishop B2, B2, rook B1. Now white has uh, blocked the the B pawn, but then Larsen plays a uh, rook B3, and now he. Um, he eyes the e3 and g3 pawns, two of the other weaknesses in the in the white camp. And after rook b5, he takes on e3. White takes the pawn on b2, and then he can play rook takes g3 check. And now we see that uh, this bishop on e5 is uh, certain suddenly playing a, a role on the king side as well as uh, it was on the the queen side. Um, and uh, Hort decides to play uh, queen h4, and um, and then Larsen plays the simple king h6, which is a uh, threatening mate on g5, and uh, there's no way for Hort to stop this uh, threat, so uh, so he resigns the game here. I hope you enjoy this uh, display of a simple chess played with a, a lot of energy and. Uh, a lot of uh, positional understanding. I think it's fascinating uh, how Larsen reaches uh, equalizing, equalization from the opening. He creates a few weaknesses in the white camp. He keeps uh, his dynamic chances on the queen side. And when the game is almost lead, uh, almost heading for a certain draw, he makes a positional pawn sack to keep some winning chances. And when his uh, opponent makes uh, the mistake. Uh, then Larsen takes full advantage and scores another win. It's uh, I, I'm, I really think this is a fascinating, fascinating uh, display of uh, of simple chess. I hope you enjoyed this game. I hope to uh, see you on my blog at uh, klausjensen.com. Bye bye for now.